Hey, what's going on? Today we're going to be doing a grenade launcher. So I uh, took some time to build this grenade launcher. It works with uh, destructible meshes. And it also works with static meshes, but here I've just got destructibles. So yeah, you can blow shit up. It's very satisfying. And uh, yeah, let's get started. We'll jump into the code. It's pretty easy. Honestly, even if you're a beginner, you should be able to follow along. So uh, yeah, let's begin. Alright, so this is super easy. Um, I've got my new project here. This is a first-person C++ project, and we're going to open up the projectile class. Uh, you could make your own class, by the way. You don't have to just use the existing projectile one, but I find it pretty handy because we're already uh, set up to fire the existing projectiles. So there's a bunch of stuff we need to sort out, but we'll start off here in the header file. So um, we're going to add a U property edit anywhere. And then the category is going to be FX. So when we shoot our grenades, there's a bunch of FX that uh, goes along with it. First thing I'm adding is this particle system here. Explosion particles, I'll call it. And um, this is basically the explosion that happens when the grenade hits something. So um, yeah, you can set it up to do any explosion you want. You know, if you make your own explosion, uh, if you know how to do that, then, you know, you can make that as well. Uh, we also have a sound that plays when the explosion happens. So, again, this is going to be category FX. And we're just going to say U sound Q. Uh, explosion sound. And that is the explosion sound that plays. And again, you can use your own one if you want. But I'm just using the one that comes with the starter content. And then, um, what I have here is a radius. So, um, when I shoot, basically we're going to check in a given radius is there anything around the uh, missile or whatever and if there is go ahead and uh, destroy it or make it go flying or whatever I'm just gonna put class before these just in case uh, yeah basically if you put class before something it's a forward declaration and it, it just helps you from getting weird header errors and stuff um, I could probably go into that in another video maybe We're going to go ahead and type uh, virtual void uh, begin play and then type in override. And then um, one more thing we need is a u function and I'm calling this on detonate. So on detonate is just going to make the grenade explode. And then we'll check if there's anything near the grenade, and if there is, then go ahead and like blow it up or whatever. Uh, also, inside of launcher.h, that's what my project is called, uh, we're going to change this to say engine minimal. And then you can just close that. So the last thing that we have to do is um, inside of the CPP file, and this is fairly easy stuff. So we'll start by adding our begin play. And then type super begin play. And what I want to do here is just set a timer. So I'm going to make a timer handle called, uh, I guess, handle will do. And But this doesn't matter because we're not going to be using the timer handle anyway. And we're going to get the timer manager and then set a timer. And we pass in the handle, pass in this, pass in the um, the function itself. So a launcher projectile on detonate. And I want it to explode after five seconds, but you can choose whatever you like for that. And then I'm putting in false because we don't want it to loop. Uh, we don't want it to explode multiple times. We only want it to explode once. Then I'm going to have, uh, let's see here, um, on dead net as well. Uh, 
Okay, so on detonate is definitely the most complicated part of this entire thing, but it's really not that bad either. The other thing I'm going to do is just come up here and get rid of this part of the if statement, because I don't care if it's simulating physics or not. And then I'm going to say on detonate. So on hit, which means when we hit something, then detonate. And um, we set up all of that stuff up here. You can see add dynamic on hit. Um, so yeah, as soon as it hits something, it doesn't care if it's simulating physics, it's just going to detonate straight away. Uh, so let's get started on the detonate function. That is definitely the most complicated part of this whole tutorial, but it's still not very uh, bad to be honest. Uh, and then also, uh, you want to add the destructible actor header file, so physics engine slash destructible actor dot h. I think that's it. Yeah, we'll just keep going. Uh, okay, so now we're ready to make our on detonate function, and then we're pretty much done, and hopefully it will work after that. So uh, we'll start by declaring our particle system component. You'll see why I'm getting a reference to this in a second. So what we're going to do is use UK play statics, spawn emitter at location. So spawn emitter at location um, is going to spawn a particle system where we tell it to. And we're going to pass in explosion particles. So this is the explosion. Uh, and then we'll say get actor transform. So wherever we are right now. And whatever rotation we're on, just use that. And then auto destroy, you can pass in true. But it's already equal to true anyway, so we'll just pass uh, nothing for that. And so what that's going to do is, as soon as the particle system's done, it's going to despawn the particle system, which is pretty handy for us. So the reason I need to get a reference to that um, particle system is so that I can go explosion set relative scale 3D. And then I'm going to set it to four times what it usually is. And the reason for that is that the um, particle system is usually quite small. So it's nice to be able to scale it up. And also I need to pass that in the if vector. Okay, um, and then also we need to play the sound. So play sound at location. Get the world play the explosion sound, and then get the location and play the sound at that location. Okay, so now we're ready to cast a shape trace. Now, um, so far in a lot of my videos, I've been doing line traces, which basically just casts a straight line and then sees what we hit. Well, what we're doing now is a sweep trace, which basically um, it declares like a sphere or a box or something like that and then traces inside of that. Uh, so you'll see what I mean. It's, it's different from a, a line trace. So we're going to start by making a T-Array of if hit results because we might hit multiple things. Uh, if hit results hit actors. We're going to declare the start trace as wherever the grenade lands, basically. And then the end trace is going to be equal to the start trace, but I'm going to add about 300 to the z-axis. If we don't add anything to the z-axis, the sweep won't work because there's no height uh, in our shape. So now we actually need to make a collision shape. So you do if collision shape. You then say uh, what type of shape it is. So collision shape dot shape type equals e collision shape. And then we're going to use a sphere for our collision. You could use a box or something if you wanted to, but I feel like a sphere is pretty good. And then finally, we need to set the extent of the um, sphere. So we're going to say radius. 
So now we're going to actually cast the sweep. So we're going to say uh, sweep multi by channel. Pass in uh, actors array, start trace, and trace. We're going to pass in an, a quaternion. I don't even know how to say it. Quaternion? Quaternion, I think. Uh, it's basically like an F-Rotator, but it's a little bit more complex, and it avoids an issue with rotators. Um, I won't go into too much detail about what they are, but it helps avoid something called uh, Gimbal Lock, I believe it's called. But yeah, don't worry about them. You can look up a video if you really want to learn about them, but they are quite complex, so I'm not going to explain what they do here. Uh, okay, so now we need to loop through whatever we've hit. So, um, if we have hit something, we're going to create an iterator. So we're going to say actors equals hit actors dot create iterator. And this just allows us to loop through whatever we've hit nice and easy. So we're going to cast whatever we've hit into a static mesh. Um, and then also, because we're checking for destructible actors as well, we're going to say a destructible actor da equals cast so we're going to check if we've hit either a static mesh or a destructible actor so the first thing we're going to do is say if sm and then we'll say else if da so we're going to check what type of uh, thing we've hit. If we've hit a static mesh, we're just going to add a radial impulse to it, and that's just going to make the mesh go flying away. Um, but if we've hit a destructible mesh, then we're going to get the destructible component. And then we're going to apply radius damage. So the amount of damage I'm going to apply is 10, but you can change that if you like. I'm going to apply the damage at the impact point. I'm going to apply... A damage radius of 500, 3000 for the impulse strength, and false for full damage. So now I have checked uh, for either a static mesh or a destructible mesh. Uh, if it is neither, nothing will happen. But if it is a static or destructible, then they will go flying or get blown to pieces. And then uh, finally, if... Uh, oh, actually, just... When it's finished, uh, just destroy it. So on detonate, we always want to destroy it once we're finished. And I think that's it. Uh, let's go ahead and try and compile. Uh, we'll have to change a couple of things, but other than that, should be ready to set up. Okay, so we've just compiled. Um, I'm going to go into the blueprints folder here, and then open up my projectile. And now we have explosion particles, so we'll go explosion. And we'll go explosion Q for the sound. And I almost guarantee this is going to crash. And it did. So we're going to restart. Unreal. Please fix that. It is so annoying. Uh, someone submitted a bug report and they couldn't replicate it. But I swear it happens all the time for me. Uh, anyways. So we'll go back in and we should be able to do it just fine now. Okay, so we're back from the uh, annoying crash. And I'm going to go ahead and come back into projectile. You can see I've set P explosion for the particle system. And I set up explosion Q for the explosion sound. And we'll save that. 
And I also made this de uh, destructible cube here. But real quick, if I shoot something, you can see it works. And if I shoot this, it blows up into pieces. Uh, and to make that destructible mesh, you just go into meshes, right click on the cube, or whatever you want to make, uh, create destructible mesh. Then you'll get something that looks like this. You want to turn um, world support on, as you can see there. Turn the support depth on a 1, and then uh, select accumulate damage. And once you've done that, you should be able to drop it into the world and blow it up. So there you guys go, that's uh, the full uh, grenade launcher system. I actually made my own grenade mesh and made my gun shoot grenades. You could also change the gun to actually look more like a grenade launcher, I guess. Um, play around with it, you know, do whatever you like, and uh, have fun. And I'll see you guys in the next video.